Now, the interesting question in following up what we just discussed is, how can you ensure that customers come back over and over again? Because if a customer returns over and over again, it is usually a very safe way to create as much shareholder value as you can. And the concept of making customers come back to you is the concept of relationship marketing. But before we talk about what relationship marketing is, let's briefly talk about what marketing actually is. On this slide, you find three definitions of marketing that have been proposed over the past, let's say 100 years. One in 1935, one in 85, and one in 2004. In 1935, marketing was defined as the performance of business activities that direct the flow of goods and services from producers to consumers. Essentially in 1935, marketing was defined as a kind of logistics or supply chain exercise, bringing stuff from the factory where it's produced to the end consumer. In 1935, there was no mention of advertising, of pricing, of anything else. It was just logistics. In 1985, marketing was defined as the process of planning and executing the conception, pricing, promotion, and distribution of ideas, goods, and services to create exchanges that satisfy individual and organizational objectives. In this definition of 1985, you find the four Ps that you are probably familiar with. Product, which is conception, price, promotion, and place, which is distribution. You also find this idea that marketing is broader than simply selling stuff. It's no longer only goods, it includes services, and nowadays it's predominantly services, and it even includes ideas. Think of something like political marketing, for example. And in 1985, the main focus of marketing was the creation of satisfaction. And we talk more about customer satisfaction and whether and how it actually relates to value creation in a later section. Now in 2004, Marketing was defined as an organizational function and set of processes for creating, communicating, and delivering value to customers and for managing customer relationships in ways that benefit the organization and its stakeholders. Now we talk about value and we talk about customer relationship management. So a question that you can ask is why and how? Why did marketing evolve from something being logistics to something being about creating satisfaction using the four Ps to something related to creating value through customer relationship management. And the reason why marketing has evolved this way is because firms have evolved in a certain way. In 1935, many firms were essentially monopolists. There was one car producer. There were probably two car producers or two companies making soap, but many companies were in an essentially monopolistic situation. Now, if you are in a monopolistic situation, you do not really need to care about marketing. Assume you are the only car producer in the world. You can produce 500 cars every given month, but everyone in the world wants a car. So 1,000 people want a car. You can produce 500, 1,000 people want a car. There is already a gap of 500 customers who want cars that you cannot satisfy. Why would you want to invest money in advertising to make even more customers want to have a car if you cannot even hold up with the production as it is? If you're in a situation where demand massively exceeds supply, most of the classical things of marketing become not relevant. What becomes relevant is efficiency, getting stuff as fast as possible out of the factory to consumers and doing whatever you can to increase your output. And this is essentially the story of a case that you have heard in multiple examples, I guess, of Ford's Model T. Ford Model T was the first car that was produced on large scale using moving assembly lines. And from 1914 to 1925, the color of the Ford Model T was switched from a multitude to color to black. And this seems like a very non-marketing related decision. Many customers want different colors than black. And you say, I don't care. It'll be black or it'll be no car. But under the logic that we just discussed, this makes sense. Because if you move from multiple colors to one color, you reduce complexity and you can increase production output slightly. <clears throat> Let's say probably from 500 to 600. And since there is already so much more demand than you can satisfy, even if 1,000 customers who wanted a car, there are 
200 who say, I would never buy a black car, we still talk about 800 versus the 600, which means we still can afford moving to black cars only and make more money because demand is so much larger. Than now, obviously you have learned in any strategy class, there's if you are a monopolist that earns so much money by selling a product that everyone wants, competition will necessarily increase. And this is what you have nowadays in any type of environment, more or less. You go to an average supermarket, you stand in front of a shelf selling shampoo, washing powder, biscuits, coffee, whatever you want, and you have dozens of different brands. This came up mostly as a logic in the 50s and 60s, up to the 70s and 80s. And what we have now is a very competitive environment. The focus is to get the deal done if you are, let's say, in the supermarket in front of the shelf. The customer stands in front of the shelf, in front of washing powder. There are 24 washing powder brands. Only one gets the deal. You need to one. You need to be the one who gets the deal. So what companies were doing at this time is they try to convince customers that they should be the brand that is chosen. And this convincing can go in two ways. Either you are the cheapest brand, which means you work on a pricing strategy and you work with discounts or whatever, or you are the brand that stands out in another way because you have the best packaging, because you have the best advertising campaign, probably even because your product is technically better than the product of your competitors. Now, the problem is that all of this decreases your profitability. If you decrease the price in order to be cheapest, you decrease your revenue, given constant cost, you decrease your profitability. And if you do anything else, advertising, new product design, whatever it is, you increase your cost, given constant revenue, that also decreases your profitability. So this focus on the four Ps that we see in the 85 definition is because companies now have to fight to get the deal. And they use these four Ps, product, price, promotion, place, in order to get the deal. But it also means that companies now start to increasingly worry about the profitability of their products. And a very common analysis that has been conducted at the time and still is today is the product line profitability analysis. You take all the different products that, for example, a supermarket sells, beer, eggs, magazine, fresh fruit, soft drinks, whatever it is, and you calculate the profitability for each of them. And what you will, for example, find out is that we earn a lot of money on beer and eggs, but we earn relatively little money on fresh fish. Why fresh fish? Well, fresh fish has a very limited shelf life. Fresh fish is only fresh for a couple of days. It needs to be cooled constantly. It probably requires special personnel selling it. So the profit is much, much less. Now, if you see this picture here, the natural decision that you will take is you probably get rid of all the products that generate negative profitability. In this case, it would be fresh fish, diapers, and frozen pizza. And that's what many companies do when they do this type of product line profitability analysis. However, what these companies forget is that the products are just tools to get the money from the customer. Remember what we discussed the session before. It's not about the product itself. The product is just the little train that helps you to get the money back from the customer. So instead of looking at products, we need to have a customer-based logic. Well, one of our customers is the young gentleman on the top of this slides who buys essentially frozen pizza, fresh fruit, and beer. If you cut out the frozen pizza of the supermarket, this young gentleman will very unlikely go to your supermarket for fresh fruit and beer and to another supermarket to buy his frozen pizza. Instead, he will go to another supermarket altogether who sells all three products. This means if you only focus on the profitability of products and you cut out the frozen pizza in this case, you also lose business on fresh fruit and beer because the customer who used to buy this product is lost and this customer would have also bought other products. And what this can lead to is what is called the profitable product death spiral. You make a product line profitability analysis in, order, in the wish to increase the bottom line, you cut out certain products because those products are cut out, customers leave. This means your overall business model changes. You have less customers, the cost, the profitability of each product changes because the fixed costs need to be distributed over less products and less customers. Other products become unprofitable. You cut those products back again, more customers leave and so on and so forth. And at the end, you either become a store that only sells beer or you probably catapult themselves out of business. 
And what this example shows you is that companies have realized in about the 2000s that this focus on getting the deal done and focusing only on a single individual purchase without looking at the customer itself is simply not efficient. And that is why nowadays we have a relationship orientation where we focus on long-term customer relationships and the co-creation of values. It started with a very famous article in the Harvard Business Review in 1990 by a guy called Frederick Richel. We come back to this article in a later session. And it's essentially the idea that we have to have the customer in mind and have a long-term view on the customer in order to remain and become profitable. So to summarize, the reason that marketing and the definition of marketing has changed so much over this past 100 years is because the situation in which firms find themselves in has changed a lot. From being a monopolist, where marketing essentially doesn't matter and where everything that matters is efficiency, to being in a hyper-competitive environment where you try to fight at each single occasion when the customer buys for the deal, but sometimes you lose the long-term picture out of focus up to relationship marketing where you keep the long-term view of the customer and long-term value.